during the war, defence was needed against enemy attack, and this was provided by between two and eighteen gunners, depending on the size of the ship. These were known as defensively equipped merchant ships. They'd much rather sink defenceless merchantmen than run the risk of getting sunk themselves after they've attacked. Already, several of our cargo-carrying ships have given a very good account of themselves in duels with U-boats, and there'll be more of such stories to follow, you can be sure of that. The gunners came from the Royal Artillery and or the Royal Navy. On British ships, they were signed on as sailors or deckhands and under the command of the master, with one of the mates, usually the second officer, made the gunnery officer. The ship's crew, including the apprentices, helped with handling the ammunition. On US ships, the armed guard was separate. The larger landing ship infantries, designated large, could carry over a thousand troops and with a wartime complement of about 80. For example, the Empire Spearhead, managed by Royal Mail Lines with Captain Hill, had four deck officers plus a purser. The fourth officer was the troop officer. The bosun was in charge of a deck department of 12. The chief engineer had six engineers and two electricians. There were 12 engine room ratings, plus a winchman, a plumber and a storekeeper. The biggest increase in wartime was in the catering department, where the chief steward was responsible for 20 stewards, 7 cooks and 4 bakers. In addition, other naval personnel included 4 to man each assault craft. A number of signalmen, known in the Navy as bunting tossers, with a naval officer that was the Senior Naval Officer Transport, or SNOT. The merchant ships were provided with two seaborne observers from the Royal Observer Corps, who were volunteers and stood watch for four hours on and four hours off, trying to identify overflying aircraft. For the landings, the merchant ships were also provided with two seaborne observers. These men were given the rank of Petty Officer RN for the duration. The merchantmen were asked if they would be willing to sign V articles. Those who inquired were told that the V indicated that they were prepared to volunteer for the mass invasion of Europe and that they could be required to work on any ship or ashore for an extra weekly ration of 200 cigarettes. Young officers who qualified for their certificates early in 1944 were told that they might be required to command landing craft. Fortunately for the Normandy landings, over 32,000 men, at least one woman, volunteered. This was in addition to the many already serving on specialised units such as tugs and salvage vessels. On the Maid of Orleans, fondly known as the Maid, Captain Payne gave a rousing speech which he ended with the words, Our job is to deliver the troops and to keep on delivering. Joan of Arc, the Maid of Orleans, liberated France. The maid will help to do the same by the grace of God. The first landing ship infantry back received a hero's welcome. Anchored ships sounded their whistles and sirens. But the wounds were there for all to see. Six empty davits showed the boats that had not returned. Other losses showed On that the Empire Battle Axe, eight out of eighteen had not returned. On the Empire Broadsword, eleven out of eighteen. The Empire Crossbow lost 3 out of 18, on the Empire Javelin 6 out of 18, and on the Maid of Orleans 1 out of 6. Returned to port, these ships urgently embarked war troops to reinforce those already landed, because without a constant supply of men, ammunition and vehicles, the advancing invasion force would stall, giving the enemy time to regroup and counter-attack. <laughs>